Thank you very much, Mr. President. The need to limit the number of new dwellings purchased by foreign investors. In Australia, there is no limit on the number of new dwellings which can be purchased by foreign investors. There is no way of knowing how many residential properties are owned by foreign investors. We do know that foreign investors are seeking to buy new dwellings in every in ever increasing numbers because each year more and more approvals are sought by the Foreign Investment Review Board. Now, let me just explain that in 2012-13 there was 4,499. In 2015-16 it was 26,052. Now, in a four-year period from 2012 to 2016, foreign investors were given approval to purchase 62,440 properties. A fee of $5,000 is paid for each approval, making it very likely that these approval numbers do represent properties purchased. In 2014-15, foreign investors were given approval to purchase 17.5% of all new property in New South Wales and over 15 per cent in Victoria. It is not unreasonable to suggest that in areas of Sydney and Melbourne the percentage of new dwellings being bought by foreign investors is likely to be 30 to 40 per cent, displacing many Australians wanting to buy in these areas. I have asked the Treasury about the policy intent which underpins the unlimited sale of new residential property to foreign investors. They tell me allowing foreign investors to buy as many new homes as they like increases the supply of new homes and it creates jobs in the construction industry. Well, this is bureaucrats gone absolutely mad. Probably these ones that live in Canberra can have their homes and it's got no relevance to people in Sydney or Melbourne who cannot buy, buy homes in their own cities or where they've grown up as children, wish to be around family and friends. So this is um, non-school and it's ridiculous. Yes, I support the building industry by all means, but not at the expense of Australians owning their own homes. Now, we know that the government no longer believes that story because the government announced in the budget an annual vacancy charge. This charge will apply when a property is not occupied or genuinely available on the rental market for at least six months each year. The charge is to be equal to the application fee at the time the property was acquired, which is currently $5,000. It is unclear how the new annual vacancy charge will operate. How will the government identify properties which are vacant for six months or more? How will the government maintain a current address for each foreign investor? And if they do manage to have a current address, how will they collect the penalty in a cost-effective way in foreign jurisdictions? So my, my opinion of this, what's been put before, is unworkable. It's not going to work out and they'll be chasing their tail. Of course, they'll set up another administration, put on another 50 or 100 people and a total cost to the taxpayer. But I do agree with the government's plan to cap at 50 per cent the number of new dwellings a developer can sell to foreign investors. Now, at least they're doing something about it because it was under Labor in 2009 and I believe it was Chris Bowen at the time, the minister, who said, oh no, all foreign investors We'll, we'll allow you to build these complexes, uh, build the, all these units, but you can sell the whole lot to foreign investors. So now we have a situation, and it's mainly in Melbourne, that you've got these complexes that are built totally foreign-owned, no one lives in them, and uh, so it's just done the strands out of the opportunity of owning their own homes. It is common ground the housing shortage in Australia results from an imbalance between supply and demand. There is too much demand for housing due in part to foreign investors as well as too little supply in areas where people need to live. So people having moved out of their, their place where they grew up, they need to work there, they need family assistance when they've had children and they want to be around friends. But these are the people that are being forced out of their places because of foreign investors driving up the prices of the housing, so they've been told, well, go out further, move out further, so they're moving away from the places that they have grown up in, close to the work, and it's costing them more and more. The government wants to increase the supply of new housing. This plan voids the need to deal with the underlying problem. 
Very few people are ta talking about the demand side of the housing problem, but I am going to. As a community, we do have the ability to reduce demand by slowing the rate of immigration into this country, and this is something I have advocated for a long time. A reduction in the number of migrants, together with changes in the ability of foreign investors to buy residential housing, would make a genuine difference to the lives of so many who would dearly love to buy a new or existing home. The present rate of immigration is too high, at 190,000 annually. The figure should be reduced to around 100,000 until we can rebalance housing, jobs and infrastructure. We cannot provide sufficient quality housing at a price ordinary people can afford. This is evidenced in the alarming increase of homeless people on the streets and the number of families and children sleeping in cars, in hospital parks, car parks or where they feel safe. The advocates of unlimited immigration through the humanitarian program or the point system show remarkably little interest in the Australians who already live here and are struggling. The Australian Greens want to open up our borders to anyone, but they always want others to pay. My suggestion to the Australian Greens is that they and their supporters take up sponsorship of the new settlers. Take them into your home, pay all their outgoings and don't burden other Australians. Um, other Australians. The shortage of housing in Australia is a government-made problem and can be solved by government. The buck passing between the federal government and the states need to stop. What stops the government reducing the number of new migrants, refugees, 457 visa holders and those buying their way into this country? The answer is that while our productivity remains low, the only way to grow the economy is to increase the size of the population. Well, they are wrong. Big businesses are the ones that will profit from this. They are the ones that are making the money out of it, while Australians are queuing for housing, health, nursing homes and everything else that was available to them, even jobs. The federal government needs to be honest with the people of Australia and tell them the truth. The truth is that poor decision-making by successive governments has led to a less productive economy that we might otherwise have had. One Nation believes the shortage of housing for Australians would be improved by limiting foreign investors to one new property and making it illegal to sell an established home to a foreign investor. What we are advocating is that at point of sale, when you are wanting to buy an established house, you must present identification that you are a permanent resident or you are an Australian citizen entitled to buy an established house. You must sign on the contract and that must match the name. That is then sent to the Foreign Investment Review Board and it's also sent to the Immigration Department. I do not believe that foreign students should be able to buy houses in Australia when they, they are entitled to, but a lot of these don't sell the houses when they leave the country. The Australian dream is to own your own home. And I will continue my fight to give that opportunity to every Australian. Thank you.